there's an invisible force that holds it all together. Throughout the Hebrew scriptures, there's an understanding of the word of God in action, right? It was by the word of God that all things were made. Psalm 107 says he sent forth his word and he healed them. Isaiah 55 speaks of God's word going forth and doing, accomplishing its purpose, and then his word returning to him. God's word is power. There's action in God's word. In Hebrews chapter one, it says that in these last days, the father has spoken to us through a son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he created the universe. This son is the radiance of his glory, the imprint of his being, upholding all things by his powerful word, right? The sun is the radiance of the glory of God. He's the brilliance, the light. So for us, the brightest thing that we encounter is the sun in the sky. We can't look directly at it, but we do see its light. Well, the sun is the light we see, the visible expression of the infinite God. And the scripture says the sun is the imprint, the character of his being. Uh, character tes hupostis stasios. The, it's literally the character of the very essence of God, upholding all things by his powerful word. Right? Everything is not what it looks like. It's more. When we study science, we're looking to understand the, the structure and the behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment, through what we can observe using our senses, right? Sight and smell and touch and taste, hearing. In science, those who have gone before us discovered that there was more uh, to what we see than meets the eye. Over time, scientists discovered that matter, the physical world, is made up of what we can't see, of invisible of, of atoms that are practically invisible to the naked eye. Atoms are made of subatomic articles called protons and neutrons and electrons. And the protons and the neutrons make up the center of the atom, the nucleus. The electrons fly around the nucleus in a small cloud. Right? The po protons are the the positive electrical charges, and the electrons are the negative electrical charges, and the neutrons are neutral. So everything that is matter is made up of atoms, of electrical charges, of power. And even in something that's solid, right, the protons, neutrons, and electrons, there's movement. There's, the electrons are revolving around the nucleus, right? There's ongoing movement. It doesn't look like it. Something that's solid looks like it's not moving, but there's movement. Right? So check this out. If we could amplify or magnify the simplest hydrogen atom so that its nucleus was as large as a basketball, then the, the lone electron, you know how far away it would be? It would be two miles away. And all that space in between, the nucleus and the electron, is empty. What is in the empty space? What is it that keeps the electron spinning around the nucleus? In an atom, what holds it together is what's called electromagnetic force. As scientists continue to pursue their understanding of the origins of the universe, they think they've tracked it back to what they've commonly called the Big Bang. Uh, suggesting recently, it said that, that, that all the universe was really compact. They say it was in less than a million, billion, billionth the size of a single atom. Uh, in an article from National Geographic describing how these scientists envisioned the Big Bang, it says, it says, then in an unimaginably small fraction of a second, all that matter and energy expanded outward at breakneck expansion. They call that inflation. And after inflation, the universe continued to expand, but at a much slower rate. But they write this, it's still unclear what exactly powered inflation, right? It's still unclear what powered inflation. So science, the observation of creation, tells those who study it, that all matter sprung forth in an unimaginably small fraction of a second. And science, observation of creatius, reveals that everything is held together by an invisible energy. All things are held together by this power. But is it actually unclear what powered this inflation, the filling of the universe? Right? It's taken thousands of years for the most brilliant minds to uncover and explain by observation what was plainly and free, freely revealed to us long ago that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Psalm 33, it says, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him, for he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The sky reveals, it shows his handiwork. In Hebrews 1, the sun is the radiance of his glory, the imprint of his being, upholding or holding all things together by his powerful word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. His Word, 
He is what holds all things together. Hold on to the living word, to Yeshua. Let his word hold you together, work in you, and make you whole.